Hello and welcome to Byju's IAS presenting to you the daily quiz for 11th of August 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Consider the following statements with respect to International Seabed Authority. It is an autonomous international organization established under the United Nations Convention on the Law of Sea. It makes binding recommendations to coastal states on matters related to the establishment of outer limits of the continental shelf extending beyond 200 nautical miles from the baseline. All the mineral related activities in the international seabed area beyond the limits of the national jurisdiction is regulated by ISA. ISA is committed to contributing to the timely and effective implementation of Sustainable Development Goal 6 in particular. Which of the given statements is or are correct? What is the context? This article in the PIB today talks about the deep ocean mission that has been approved by the government. So now India has been allotted a site of 75000 square kilometers in the Central Indian Ocean basin by the International Seabed Authority. and this is for the exploitation of polymetallic nodules and one of the focuses of the deep sea mission is on deep sea mining what are these polymetallic nodules polymetallic nodules are rocks that are scattered on the seabed and these contain varying amounts of iron manganese nickel and cobalt so now this article here has a mention of the international seabed authority and hence we've taken up this question Now coming back to the question. Yes, statement number 1 is correct because International Seabed Authority is an autonomous organization that was established under UN clause or the United Nations Convention on the Law of Seas. Statement number 2 is incorrect because the International Seabed Authority does not make any recommendations on the limits of the continental shelf. This is the mandate of Commission on Limits of Continental Shelf. This commission was established to facilitate the implementation of UN clause. So what does ISA do? ISA regulates deep seabed mining and ensures that marine environment is protected from any harmful effects because of the deep seabed mining. So statement 3 becomes correct. Statement number 4 is incorrect because the International Seabed Authority is not focused on implementation of SDG 6 in particular but it is Sustainable Development Goal number 14. Sustainable Development Goal number 14 is conservation and sustainable use of oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. In short, Sustainable Development Goal 14 focuses on life below water and achieving this Sustainable Development Goal is the major focus of International Seabed Authority making statement number 4 incorrect. Therefore, the right answer to this question would be option C, 1 and 3 only. Moving on to question number 2. Global Environment Facility functions as a financial mechanism for which of the following conventions? Number 1 Minamata Convention on Mercury Number 2 Stockholm Convention on Persistent Organic Pollutants Number 3 United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity Number 4 United Nations Convention to Combat Desertification Number 5 United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change What is the context This article in the PIB states that the UNIDO and the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy have launched a global environment facility funded interest subvention scheme for the demonstration of innovative industrial organic waste to energy biomethanation projects and business models and that is why we've picked up a question on global environment facility so what exactly is global environment facility This is a multilateral financial mechanism that provides grants to developing countries for the projects that benefit the global environment. Another goal of Global Environment Facility is to promote sustainable livelihoods in the local communities. This is an independently operating financial organization. The Global Environment Facility was established during the Rio Earth Summit in 1992. So this is an international partnership of nations, international institutions, civil society organizations as well as the private sector that addresses global environmental issues. So the funds of the Global Environment Facility are available to all the developing countries and the countries with economies in transition to meet the objectives of international environmental conventions as well as agreements. So it aims to provide finances to tackle the most pressing environmental issues. 
It provides grants for projects that are related to biodiversity, climate change, chemicals, international waters, land degradation, ozone layer, etc. With respect to our question, the Global Environment Facility acts as a financial mechanism to all of these five major international environmental conventions. So the right answer to our question would be option D, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Moving on to question number 3. He started a movement in Bihar and Jharkhand belt in the 19th century under the British colonial rule. As a result of this struggle, the Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act was passed in the year 1908. He is also known as Dharti Abba. The tribal leader being talked about is Option A. Kanhu Murmu Option B. Birsa Munda Option C. Tirut Singh Option D. Bar Manik What is the context? This article in the Hindu newspaper today has a mention of the tribal leader Birsa Munda. So who is Birsa Munda? Birsa Munda hailed from the Munda tribe and he spearheaded the tribal uprising during the 19th century. So during this time, the Munda Sardars of Chota Nagpur were struggling against the destruction of their system of common land holdings. The Jagirdars, the Tikhadars, that is the revenue farmers, as well as the money lenders had included their farmlands. And in the last decade of this 19th century, all these tribal people from the Munda tribe under Birsa Munda started a movement called as the Ulgulan or the Great Tumult. So these Mundas aimed at establishing a Munda rule in the land by killing the Tikadars, the revenue farmers as well as the money lenders. And Birsa Munda's struggle against the exploitation and discrimination against these tribals led to a big hit against the British government. How? The Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act was passed in the year 1908. Why did it affect the British, you may ask? This is because the act restricted the passing of the land from tribal people to the non-tribal people. He also started a faith called as the Birsait and his followers often called him Dharti Abba or the Earth Father. So the right answer to our question would be option B, Birsa Munda. Moving on to question number 4. Which of these mountain passes is or are located in Ladakh? Zojila, Nathula, Bumrila, Mulingla. What is the context? An article in the Indian Express newspaper today explains how the abrogation of Article 370 of the Indian Constitution has helped in the transformation of Ladakh. In this article, the author, while talking about the development of border infrastructure in Ladakh, also talks about some passes in Ladakh and the tunnels that are being constructed, hence this question. Among these passes that we have here, Zoshila is the only pass in Ladakh. Nathula is in the East Sikkim district and it connects Sikkim with Tibet. Bomdela Pass is in Arunachal Pradesh and Mulengla is located to the north of Gangotri and this pass connects Uttarakhand with Tibet. So the right answer to our question would be Zojila which is option C, one only. The task for you for today is a map based activity. Try and locate all the important mountain passes in Ladakh on the map. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2018. Momentum for change, climate neutral now is an initiative launched by Option A, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change Option B, the UNEP Secretariat Option C, the UNFCCC Secretariat Option D, the World Meteorological Organization The right answer to this question would be Option C, the UNFCCC Secretariat the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Secretariat launched its Climate Neutral Now initiative in the year 2015. This is one of the several initiatives of the UNFCCC Secretariat to increase climate action by engaging the non-party stakeholders, such as the sub-national governments, the companies, organizations, as well as the individuals. In the following year, that is in the year 2016, the UNFCCC Secretariat launched a new pillar under its Momentum for Change initiative that was focused on the climate neutral now as a part of the larger efforts to showcase successful climate action around the world. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option C, the UNFCCC Secretariat. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today, which is Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana. What is the context? This PIB article talks about the schemes that are related to food processing industries in the rural areas. It also talks about the Kisan Sampada Yojana. 
So this scheme that is the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana is an umbrella scheme that is being implemented for the overall growth and development of the food processing sector including the processing of agro products. So this is one of the several schemes that are being implemented by the government for increasing the income of farmers. The scheme is being implemented by the Ministry of Food Processing and Industries. So what exactly is this scheme? This scheme is a comprehensive package which aims to create modern infrastructure with efficient supply chain management from farm gate to retail outlet. So the main focus of this scheme is to ensure that there is an efficient and effective supply chain management between the farm gate and the retail outlets where the products are sold. Please note that the scheme is not region or state specific but it is a demand driven scheme and is implemented across India. What are the components covered under the Kisan Sampada Yojana? Number 1 would be Mega Food Park scheme. The Mega Food Park scheme aims at providing a mechanism to link agricultural production to the market. And this is done by bringing together farmers, the processors and retailers to ensure maximizing value addition and minimizing wastages. So these mega food parks typically consist of supply chain infrastructure. At present there are more than 20 mega food parks that are operational across the country. The second component scheme under Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana is the integrated cold chain and value addition infrastructure. As the name itself suggests This scheme aims at providing integrated cold chain and preservation infrastructure facilities. Then there is the creation and expansion of food processing and preservation capacities. Under this scheme there is setting up of new units or modernization or expansion of the existing food processing and preservation units. Next would be the infrastructure for agro processing clusters. This scheme aims at development of modern infrastructure and common facilities to encourage a group of entrepreneurs to set up food processing units. Each agro processing cluster under this scheme will have two basic components that is the basic enabling infrastructure and the core infrastructure. They are provided with basic enabling infrastructure such as roads, water supply, electricity etc. and the core infrastructure are common facilities such as warehouses cold storages etc then comes the creation of backward and forward linkages the objective of this scheme is to provide effective and seamless backward and forward integration of the processed food industry and this is achieved by plugging the gaps in the supply chain in terms of availability of raw materials and then linking the final finished products with the market The next scheme is food safety and quality assurance infrastructure. This scheme will provide a competitive edge to the products in the global market for food products. It will ensure that the food processors follow strict quality and hygiene norms and thereby will protect the health of consumers as well as enhance the quality of the products even for international trade. Operation Greens project was approved by the Ministry of Food Processing and Industries with a target to stabilize the supply of tomatoes, onion and potato crops in India as well as to ensure their availability across the country year around without price volatility. So these are the component schemes under the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana. Under the component schemes of the Pradhan Mantri Kisan Sampada Yojana the Ministry of Food Processing Industries provides mostly credit linked financial assistance that is capital subsidy in the form of grants and aids to entrepreneurs for setting up food processing or preservation industries that is all for today thank you for being with us keep watching and keep learning